Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Um, you know, it's, it's cool when, when you, you and your logo are, are both, both handsome. See, I see a lot of uh, consulting companies out there where uh, neither, neither the logo nor the consultant are handsome. Uh, so really, getting, getting the total package from me is, is worth every single penny. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, a really annoying, I guess, maybe the plural, maybe that S shouldn't be there. It's a, it's a sort of an annoying limitation with foreign keys and join elimination. Now, the first thing I want to say about foreign key join elimination is that it happens under such limited circumstances anyway, that you should stop trying to meme people into using foreign keys by saying it's a thing. Like, it, it's... It, it happens so rarely and in, in so rarely in useful circumstances that I, I don't understand the point of even bringing it up. It's almost like um, when, when, some, when people talk about other, uh, when other, other facilities in SQL Server with this like, like, like meme white knighting of what makes, what, why they're okay when they're, they kind of suck. Uh, things like, you know, common table expressions being more readable, table variables being only in memory, things like that. Things that are just like, Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, you so, you 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 read the you read a LinkedIn post where where someone said that, and now you're just gonna ride and die with that. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, foreign key join elimination is right up there with that. Now, foreign keys in SQL Server do work as long as they're not, you know, disabled, <laughs> uh, and as long as they've been re-enabled correctly, um, they, they they will totally, um, you know. Uh, make sure that you have referential integrity between two tables. They will make sure that uh, rows exist or, you know, are present in one table that have to be present in another table. It's fine. They do that. They also, you know, um, you know, if you're, I mean, God, God don't put them in a data warehouse. Uh, one thing I got to say up front is data warehouses are not the place for these things. Your OLTP data is the place for these things, and your data warehouse should just follow whatever you know ETL processes is, are, processes are necessary to take to you know honor whatever uniqueness or referential integrity or other constraints uh, exist in your uh, relational data, your OLTP data. Your data warehouse should just be a big, beautiful, co massive column store indexes where you don't mess with things that slow down data loads, all right? If you put those things in your data warehouse, you're asking for things to be slow. Take care of them somewhere else. Do not, do not put these things in your data warehouse. It's stupid, 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 stupid. Anyway, uh, if you like this channel and you would like to support this channel with money, you can do that. I have very, very low cost uh, member sponsorship options. So I have a hair on my neck somewhere that's feels very strange. Uh, <laughs> if you are unable to participate in, in, the, in the money thing, um, other things that make my heart go pitter-patter are likes and comments and subscribes. You can hear it from here. That might be arrhythmia. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Um, <laughs> there's a reason I take a lot of blood pressure medication, all right? Uh, if you need SQL Server consulting help, these are the things that I usually help my clients with. Uh, if you need something else, we can negotiate. Uh, but if you need any of this stuff, uh, I, can, I can pretty much do this right out of the box for you. Uh, if you need some SQL Server performance tuning training, uh, I have very, a very low cost option where you can get about 24 hours of it for just about $150 US if you use that discount code over there. I'm not sure where my finger, ah, there goes the finger. Um, but there's a link to get that uh, coupon code applied dir directly for you uh, down in the video description. I will be out in the world. I will be out in the world speaking to real live people in two dates in the, in the, in the near future. Uh, Friday, September 6th, I will be at Data Saturday Dallas doing a full day pre-con. I also have a couple regular sessions on September 7th. Then November 4th and 5th, I will be at Past Data Summit um, doing a, a big old double team high five with Kendra Little on two days of pre-cons uh, there. So um, all, all great things to show up to and all, all great events to support with your, with, with your, with your very presence. Your, your mere presence, you can, you can support 
me and countless other speakers who show up and organizers who put these things together. And it, it's a nice thing to do for the data community because you are, you are part of the data community, aren't you? You're one of us. You've been, you've been, you've been borged in, right? So let's get on and talk about something that really irks me with foreign keys in SQL Server. And I don't know why this thing gets so tiny when, when, I, when, I, when I close out. It doesn't look that small uh, normally, so it's a little strange. All right, so let's start by setting things up. All right, we are going to uh, drop some tables if they exist, and, and they did up until a minute ago. They, they were there, they were live and present. Uh, and then we're gonna create uh, two tables, um, one called uh, I forget why I named it this. Maybe I was just mad at Connecticut that day because, you know, that, that kind of speaks for itself. Uh, and then both, both of these tables have uh, clustered primary keys on this column called uh, ID, obviously, and they have two date columns that we're not going to really do much with. Uh, and then um, I think I already did this. I think, I think this was part of the initial highlight. Yep, I already did that. Good for me. SQL Server is working correctly. It said that foreign key already exists. So we've created a foreign key on CT that references the ID column, or sorry, on the ID column in the CT table that references the ID column in the CT underscore FK table. All right, so we have that there. And if we do, do a little background check on our foreign key, we will see that it, it is present in the database. It is not disabled. And it is not not trusted. It's the old double negative here. Whatever Microsoft person decided to phrase it this way, I wish that I could spend some time with you where there, there are no video cameras uh, and no, no, no other recording devices. Because what, why the hell would you do this? Why would you just not call it is trusted? Why is, why is it is not not trusted? Now we have to say, is it not not trusted or is it is trust trusted? You know, so, is you is or is you ain't? We don't know. Uh, but that's a zero, so it, it is trusted or not not trusted. Is great news for us. Now, this is where things get funny for me. If we run this query and we say, hey, does stuff in the CT table exist in the FK table? Is it there? Is you is or is you ain't? Well, in, in this query plan, you'll notice that we only have to touch one table. Right? We, we, even, even though we say, hey, stuff in here, SQL Server says, we know it's there. We got you. It's fine. Don't worry. Don't sweat it. We're good. We're fine. Right? We, don't, we don't need to go check over there. Right? It's obviously there. It's a foreign key. The foreign key is enabled and not, not, un, not, not un, is, is untrust, untrust. It's a very trustworthy foreign key, okay? Let's leave it at that. It's very trustworthy. But now when we say, hey, SQL Server, is there, is there anything here that, 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 that's not, not in that table? SQL Server, SQL Server loses some of its confidence. It loses some of its moxie. moxie. Someone... Someone knocked the cool right out of SQL Server's walk because now we end up having to check both tables to figure out if stuff's there or not. SQL Server all of a sudden does not trust all of a sudden does not trust that foreign key so much anymore, does it? We no longer eliminate that join. And that's a very strange thing to happen because just a second ago, when we asked if stuff was there, SQL Server was very sure of itself. Cocksure, you might even say. And now, now what we say, is anything not there? Well, pfft. <laughs> Who can tell? We have to go check both tables to figure it out. So this is one of those dumb things. And this, this actually sort of aligns with a video that I did. Uh, well, I, I, at this point, it may have been published two or three days as of when you see this. But it almost kind of goes back to the, the video I did about what annoys me about computed col columns and um, filtered indexes where if, if you don't ask the exact right question in the exact right order, it's all of a sudden SQL Server's like, I, I, I don't know you, I can't, I, can't, I, I, uh, I can't, can't use that filtered index, I can't use that computed column, can't, can't do that, nope, nope, you, you didn't do things right, can't use it. Um, 
which is pretty ridiculous, right? And so if you, if you haven't seen that video, you should go watch that video to see another way in which SQL Server is utterly patently ridiculous, all right? So this is a short one because, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time picking on foreign keys. They are, they are useful for ensuring refer refer referential integrity. I hate saying those words. Um, I guess if I, had, if I had to, you know, one more word of wisdom slash caution with them is um, if, you're, if you're the type of person who uh, gets these grand ideas in their head about using cascading foreign keys, uh, just be very careful because cascading foreign keys uh, behind the scenes use a serializable isolation level to make sure that everything maintains that referential integrity. So when you uh, update or delete in that cascading action, foreign, or that foreign key action cascades out, uh, you're using a, you, behind the scenes SQL servers like, nope, serializable, which is another great reason to make sure that your foreign keys are well supported by indexes because you, you don't want that going on for a very long. Uh, that can be quite a misery. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope you, you find this troublesome and annoying the way I do. Uh, if you remember all the stuff that I said about the liking, the subscribing, the training, the consulting, mm, great. If not, you can rewind and get, get reacquainted with all that, that, that vast expanse of knowledge. Anyway, um, I think that's about it for this one. I have, I have some other videos that I'm going to record. Uh, you, you, might, you might be able to guess some of the, the topics by looking at some of the, the tab names up here. Some of the tab names are none of your business. Don't look at those. Some of them will be in, be in upcoming videos. So it'll be, a, it'll be a surprise to you, but not to me. It might, some of the ones that don't show up might be, might be a disappointment to you, but... All in good time, my friends. All in good time. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.